So good morning. Today is why do students procrastinate? I'm gonna start this off by saying this. All students struggle, all people struggle with procrastination one time or another on whether it's putting off a project or you know putting off something special that we do but this is pretty much a conversation about why do we procrastinate I, I feel like it's something that we all can learn from one another as far as moving forward so why do we procrastinate why do you think that we procrastinate i mean as student when i was in college I always made excuses of why i didn't do something why i put this off to the last minute and i juggled a lot of different things whether it was i was a student athlete so i had to be the student first before i could be the athlete i worked a part-time job i think i worked two jobs i worked at the rec center and i worked at walker really i had three jobs if you want to add the athlete part into it because i feel like that was a job too at it, at it. So, and then I had to go to school. That was my job too. So I was doing, I was working. That was pretty much what it was. But I put a lot of stuff off at the last minute because I I just didn't do it in a timely fashion. Like the one thing that I learned from college was, was having that silly, having things put in place. And that's, that's one of the biggest things that I learned is like, you can't put stuff off at the last minute, even from working now. Like when I put something off at the last minute, it come back and bite me in the butt real hard. And then I'm like, scrambling to get things done you know so students who procrastinate and wait at the last minute tend to do work much worse on assignments than peers who started earlier right is that is that that's a saying you hear that all the time right um but we often from that experience what what are some of the things that we experience when it comes to doing things at the last minute stress, stress. What else? Um, besides stress, um, guilt. Yeah. You know, the anxiety level may go what? Up. Uh, you know what I mean? It felt like when it, when, when finals came or midterms came, just from being a, a college athlete from running track, it felt like I was running track every day when it came to the class part. Like I was going out there, my heart beating. That's all you hear. That's all you hear. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, even with taking 15 credit hours, I knew I learned from the from semester to semester that 15 credit hours didn't work for me. It brought my anxiety like level up, skyrocketed. And I'm like, yo, how can I move forward from doing this? So I didn't take 15 credit hours. I started taking 12. But I knew to make up for that summer. I had to take summer classes. You know, so it was different things you have to learn about yourself from semester to semester. If 15 credit hours don't work for you, don't take 15 credit hours. You don't you 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 need to be a full time student. I need to take what? 12 credit hours. Right. Mm -hmm. So this can lead to low self-esteem and even depression. Creating a what? Bad semester. Right. When we do these things. So how do we help ourselves overcome the temptation of procrastination? What, what, is, what is one thing that we do that we can do to help ourselves? Plan ahead. Plan ahead. So what does plan, what planning ahead is going to do what in the end? Allow you to have enough time to complete everything. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like the the what is, what is it that I call um, proper planning prevents piss poor performance, you know, piss poor performance or however you want to say it, you know. But if we properly plan, we'll it will not have piss poor performance, you know. Like that means properly studying, you know, putting in those successful study habits. But I mean, it's crazy because procrastination comes up from a lot of different things. Like one of the things could be the fear of the outcome. You know, some students are afraid to fail, but I'm here to tell you, you're going to fail a million times in life before, you know, you succeed. You have to fail before you can succeed, you know. But like you said, if you don't put the proper planning into it and you're going to fail, the outcome is going to be failure. What else? What else could be something? Feeling overwhelmed, right? Trying to juggle what? So you may be intimidated by what you see as far as the 
complex of the assignment. You know what I mean? You feel like that sometimes? Yeah. But what what can you do to set yourself up to be successful when you feel that way? Well, break it up into like smaller sections. Break it up into smaller sections. What else? You can collaborate with others. Yeah. Collaborate with others. What you who you paying? Not the school. Who you paying? The teacher. The teacher. Go see the teacher. We should never be afraid to go see that teacher, you know, because the teacher is who is supposed to be the expert, right? About the material that we we okay. say, we cover. What else? Distractions, right? A distractions could be another thing. You know, if social media is a distraction, what should you do? Keep it away. Keep it away. What's another distraction? Friends, relationships, relationships um, events, events, parties, yeah. all of that stuff, right? So how do we cope with that? I mean, because friends and all of these things, they're going to be there, right? They're going to be there. But what what's most important right now? School, finishing. Finishing, graduation. you know, graduation. Because this is my investment to take me to where I'm trying to go. You know? The friends and all of that stuff is going to be there. It's not going anywhere, right? But this four-year opportunity could be going somewhere if you take advantage of it. Or it could not be going anywhere if you would procrastinate, right? By doing the things that you're not supposed to be doing, you know? But it happens, though. You know? It happens. But how do I draw myself back in when these things happen? How do I draw myself back in? Think about your long-term goals. Think about your long-term goals. I mean, even the short-term goals, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it's a lot of things that I want to accomplish, you know what I mean? But I look at the small thing, the small goals, like, even for the whole year, you might think like, dang, I ain't really do nothing this, this year, right? But in the end, because you're looking at everything from the big picture, instead of saying, let me look at it from what? The small picture. Like last year, I was like, man, last year I accomplished a lot of things. Like I came to Trio. I left from the advisement office. I feel like that was a big step in my life. You know, I came to Trio, you know implemented some different things over here i got i want to be more involved within the workshops this is this is new you know this is this wasn't created you know but i feel like me talking and being more personable with the students that i work with you know all of these things happen what what's some of the things that happened the small things that happened for you guys last year um i made all a's made all a's Hey, see, but you can't look at her success like that, you know? So, And that's another reason why students procrastinate is because we try to level ourselves up to somebody else, you know? Maybe I might need to surround myself with, you know, with this student mm -hmm. that got all A's. Okay, um, I got A's every month. That's scary. You got what? A's every month. A's every month. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that means you're a good writer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Like, like an employee of the month? Mm -hmm. um, another cause of why students feel procrastination or could procrastinate is uncomfortable work environment. Mm -hmm. But I always think that being uncomfortable sometimes isn't a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. But you got to know where you can study. You got to know where you can perform at. You know what I mean? Like... You know, good as well, in my eyes, this is my theory. Now, everybody might look at it differently. Studying at home ain't going to work. Just to be real, studying at home is not going to work. Why is it going to work? I don't know. I just be too comfortable. That's the key thing. That's the key thing. You're too comfortable. So, you you know, step up, step outside of that comfort zone. You know what I mean? Like, I know me, personally, in college, I know I couldn't study at home because my bed was there, you know, my the TV was there. 
I at that time in college, I lived with my girlfriend. She was there. We had a little dog. He was there. Always wanted to play. You know, it was too many things that was there. Food. You know what I mean? And oh my God, it, it went, especially with that TV. The TV was my the main problem. I know it was times that I missed class. You know why? Because my favorite movie would come on. Rocky, Rocky come on. Karate Kid come on. Oh, I'm stuck. One day the coach called. Roy, you coming to practice? Yeah, I'll be there. As soon as the show cut off. But I didn't tell him that, but that was in my mind. As soon as the show cut off, I'm going to practice. I remember one semester, my sophomore year, I got a 1.9 from, from procrastinating. Playing video games. That was what I was doing. I, I go to class. How you going to go to class, get to work, and don't do the work? That don't make sense. You know, it was like I was wasting time. And that's what I did. I'm sitting up there and playing video games. I get out of class, I'll go and play video games. College football. Dynasty. It was a whole season. So me and a couple of other um, teammates was doing that. But they focused on their stuff. But I got distracted by a video game, you know? So it was like, I had to let all of that go. Like, I had to stop trying to study at home. I had to take my studying to the library. And one thing that I learned about the library is the library was cold. So I could never get comfortable in the library. Even if I brought a coat, you know what I mean? I always keep a jacket on in there because it was, you know, it was chilly. But it forced me. It forced me to get right. It forced me to get. Oh, let me let me get my stuff together. And I stayed in the library then. At one point, when I was with had a girlfriend, she thought I was cheating. Because I'd be like, I'm at the library. That was like my second apartment. You know what I mean? I was at the library studying that, and that was where I felt comfortable studying. At. I got a lot of stuff done there, opposed to she could study at home. She knew how to turn the TV off, you know, and do these things. That's why I feel it's uncomfortable to, it's, you're too comfortable to study at home. How do you guys feel about that? You feel the same way? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, sometimes I'll even be like, oh, well, let me just sit in my bed with my laptop. I'll get my work done. And then I just close the laptop and just go to sleep. So. What about you? You're better than me. I fall asleep with the laptop oh, still no. on. <laughs> <laughs> I just do my work at work. Like, literally, like, work is the best place. Like, you never do it at home. Sometimes I complete a trigger place mm -hmm. and I do it. Not ever at home. Yeah. Unless my roommates have people over. They loud. Mm -hmm. I can get stuff done. Because they loud. So while it's loud, you can get work done? Yeah, to a certain degree. Because I block them out. It keeps me mm. awake, too. Okay. Well, the last thing that... Uh, I, well, not last thing, but I got two more things. It's like um, that causes is is perfectionism. You can't do nothing perfect. Nobody is perfect, you know. But a lot of people will be like, "Oh, it's not right. I'm not gonna turn that in." And all. Oh. Come on now. You put your best foot forward if you started it early, you know, and you took it and you said, "Oh, I'm gonna take it to the writing center." If you had a paper due, take it to the writing center. I'm going to let the professor check it out. You know, professor and did all of these things. What What you got to say? No, I mean, like, now you said it. That's why I procrastinate. To avoid that. What, to avoid? Perfectionism. Because if you start early, you feel like you got to, like, go no. through all these steps. If I, me, me personally, if I start early and I set a goal for when I want to finish it, and I done finished it at that time, and I done took it to what? The professor and the writing center? It's done. It's done. Because I got to go on to the next. That's why you get stuck right here. Because you looking, oh, it's got to be perfect. It, it's not going to be perfect. I didn't start it early. I didn't put my best foot forward. Let me turn it in. Let me get the results from it. That's how you go from start to finish. It was like my coach would always say, I, 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 I go to the athlete standpoint, but he was always say, finish the race, Roy. One day I, I stopped, I slowed, ran through the line, jogged through the line, and almost didn't make the finals because I didn't finish the race. I started, you know, I, I started hard, but I got lazy at the end. And that's what that is. 
you starting, oh, I'm just start the race. But then you just like going through the motions of turning in because you're like, man, it ain't per it ain't where it's supposed to be at. And that's why you shouldn't do stuff at the last minute. That's what you're saying. Because you're trying, oh, man, I'm trying to put my best work at. And you can't put your best work at the last minute. You have to do it from what? From the start. Okay, I set the tone from the start. So if I set the tone of doing things at the last minute, I'm going to get them last minute results. And I've done it. I've said the same thing you've said. Oh, I do this at best at the last minute. <laughs> but then you're just throwing together a whole bunch of stuff that you don't even know what you just put together. So how are you learning? You learning to do stuff at the last minute. And it's going to constantly catch up with you. So that's why we got to create that habit. Perfectionism is it can't be perfect. You know, that's the that's the big thing. I mean, I can set myself up to look like I'm perfect by doing this stuff, giving myself enough time. They give you all these things to read. You say all these readings to try to juggle. They know that you can't perfect reading all of that stuff. Now, some people will try, but it's, let, me, can, let me go find the information, the important information out of this. And that's what I want to learn. You know, the last thing, like we all think we already talked about, this was the lack of motivation. You know, the student is not motivated to work on assignments either out of boredom or because he or she does not understand the material. <laughs> you don't understand the material, so you go, you go get into your feelings. But you paying what? Forty thousand dollars for the education. Oh, I'm going to knock on the teacher door, <laughs> you know, as this $40,000 that I may or may not have to pay back because maybe I have got some free money to pay for it or fund it. You know, I don't know. But the motivation, I know, I know I, I, I may be saying speaking for trying to speak for every student and I can't speak for every student because we do fall in these times where we are unmotivated to do something. But for the investment that you put in into this. You shouldn't procrastinate at the at the last wait to the last minute. But like I said, things happen. But the motivation should always be there if I'm investing this much money into it. So, how to overcome some of these things? The fear of the fear of out outcome. You know, you gotta face your fears at some time, right? With this education, you want to graduate, right? Everybody want to graduate. Walk across that stage and shake the president's hand and say, "Thank you." You know, I'm a Georgia State alumni now. Everybody wants that, but you got to it's some things that you're going to have to go through throughout this four years to get there. You know, mine was fear of test taking. I hated taking tests. I don't care what it was on. You know what I mean? And even if I did know the information, I hated taking tests. So I would be like, man, I hope this class is essay based mm -hmm. because I feel better with writing the essay because I can get my thoughts out. I knew I need three bullet points. You know, to support whatever it was that I was talking about. So if I read the information, it was there. I wasn't knew I wasn't good because I knew it. Multiple choice teachers would try to throw you off with the question. So, you know, that was my fear of the outcome, you know, was taking multiple choice tests. Because I knew the way that I studied wasn't going to allow me to be successful when it came to multiple choice. Because I'm out thinking myself based off the outcome. I knew the answers. I knew the information. So I was like, you know what? I got to try something different. And I just had to change my approach to the way I was studying. I'm trying to read everything. I made index cards. That's what worked for me, you know? So the fear of the outcome is one of the ways talking about these fears, you know? Um, what else? So you may need to come and talk to me. You may need to go and talk to the professor, you know, about your fears, you know. It's good to let people know what your fears is because then we can help you address some of these things, you know. So go on to talk to somebody. The next thing is the overwhelm. If a task or assignment is too complex, you need to, like you said, what did you say? Break, break it down. I got to break it down in small pieces. That's why we start early. We don't start at the last minute because you can't break down what a 20 page paper and you can't break that down in small pieces when the teacher won't what 10 sources cited sources or 15 cited sources in the paper. You can't break that down because what I got to go read this information to be able to put it what in my paper. 
So we got to break this down in small pieces from the start of the semester to when that paper is due or when this assignment is due. They give you the blueprint at the beginning of the semester. So that feeling overwhelmed, you made yourself feel overwhelmed. Now, I, like I said, I know life happens. Things are expected to, to happen and come up. But when it comes to this school stuff, you should be breaking this stuff down. Oh, I got my cell phone. Let me put this in my cell phone. That's how I'm going to move forward with not feeling so overwhelmed. Okay? The distractions, like I told you, the distractions, they're going to be there. But I have to know how to manage the distractions. What's not, man, I can't, I can't go out tonight, maybe tomorrow, but I really got to get this studying done, you know? Stay, stay stuck on what it is that you want to do. I can't, I can't do that. Even like I tell some students, they knock on the door and they want to just walk in and sit down and expect for me to go into detail. Depending on what the situation is, I can do it, but sometimes I can't do it. I got to know how to say no to the distractions like ain't even saying the student is a distraction but sometimes they want to come in and just sit ain't no just coming in and sit you can make an appointment whatever we need to talk about we got to make an appointment so that's how you should be maybe structuring your time sur surrounded around the distractions is maybe let me say hey you got to make an appointment for us to go out you know what i mean i got to make an appointment to go out to the to the bar and you know have some wings with the friends or Whatever it is that you plan on doing, maybe I got to do that. Let me put y'all on hold for a minute. They ain't going nowhere, right? Feel uncomfortable work environment. Psst, you already know what to do, right? I ain't saying that the library works for you. You say you like music. You like to feel other people around you. You know what I mean? The library might be a good place. Starbucks might be a good place. You know what I mean? That's that's what works for you, but you can't expect for that to work for somebody else. So that may work for you. You're not gonna be perfect, like I said. So stop it. You know, stop stop trying to be perfect and put on that perfect role and start breaking stuff down into small pieces, like we said. And then the motivation piece, like I said, this is just me re giving you a recap of what pretty much what we talked about the motivation piece you have to go to the professor the professor is supposed to make you love what you learning you know what i mean or you may need to go to the writing center and the writing center can break it down better for you a better understanding from you or you and trio student support services someone in this office may can break it down for you to understand a little bit and build you back up to really liking and wanting to learn you know you may have to go to those people you know all of these things are resources you know the distractions make you those distractions that we say distractions is use them to your advantage you can't always say that oh they're distractions because they make it help you in some type of way they make it uplift you in some type of way you know but we so quick to say oh they just a distraction no it's a distraction when it starts to have you procrastinating on doing the things that you're not doing all right. So in the end, how do we turn our procrastination into pro productivity? No matter the cause of procrastination, it's important to always understand that a habit can have a negative impact inside and outside of the classroom. OK. You can help yourself overcome the procrastination problem by what? Developing what? Better what? Study habits and self-management. It's never too late to get started. Okay? So that's all I, you know, that was all this conversation was about today was, you know, how to not procrastinate. Why do we procrastinate? It's human. It's a part of human nature. So don't ever feel like, oh, somebody else not doing, somebody, we are procrastinating in some type of way. You know what I mean? So, you got to deal with that in life, you know. But what's most important, I feel like, what's most important right now? What's the most important thing that you guys should be focusing on? In my, my school, trying to finish mm -hmm. um, and getting a good job. And what, what's most imp whatever is most important to you, you know. Like, I can't say that those things are most important to you, but I know graduation is most important because 
what are we here for? You know, what are we striving for? We're not here to be professional students. You know, we're here to get out of here in a timely fashion and go move on with our lives and share this same information with what? The younger generation, you know, to help them build them up so that they won't make some of the same mistakes that we make. So that's why I'm here, you know. How do y'all feel? Y'all okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you know, for the most part, um, like I said, that was that was the conversation today was why do students procrastinate? I hope you guys gain something from it. You fill out a survey, um, for me um, up front and that's it you know I look forward to you know seeing you guys again in the near future it is a workshop today it's a makeup workshop the true colors it's gonna start at 11 o'clock if you can make it if you can't then I, I understand thank you yeah.